Good afternoon, friends. Hope you're all well. Welcome to the How To Craft Network studio. It's lovely to have your company. The sun is shining. It's going to be a great day. A couple of updates for you. Firstly, if you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button. Uh, we are live most days, as you all know, and we in hope to inspire in one way or another. I can't sew, though, as you all know, and I keep saying it. I do like chocolate, though. Just add another Kit Kat. This time it was a chocolate orange Kit Kat. It was quite yummy, actually. So I hope you're all well. Today is day seven of our Create Together Club, chapter two. Oh, so um, 25 hours plus of content on three stamps is awesome. Do you think? Awesome. Now, if you want to get involved in the Create Together Club, you can absolutely do that. The videos never go away. They're always on YouTube. They're just under our playlist called Create Together. So you get seven days worth of content or seven um, sessions of content over the course of the three A5 stamps. Now, we send all of the A5 stamps and some of them are sealed in envelopes. So you don't cheat. But we are at the end of the last one. So if you do want to get involved and play catch up, you can do that. We still have some left. So it's these three lovely stamps here. Very quickly show you. So we're working on this one and it's the last session of this one. But we've done Somebody Loves You and All Mine as well. Now, the um, inspirational content is on YouTube and you can get this on our website. All you need to do is pop Create Together into the website and it will come up for you. And it explains how the system works. It's a wonderful way to be interactive with your friends who are crafters. It's a lovely way to maybe use stamps in different ways that you wouldn't normally. And I know most of you, if you're anything like me, you'll use a stamp three times, four times, a push five, and then it goes away into a dark hole. Whereas this Create Together Club inspires you and encourages you to keep on using them. And they all work together as well, which you've seen over the course of the whole um, sort of club. Now, we are going to be doing another one, and I'm probably going to speak about that next week now because I've got a lot of stuff to talk about in today's show. So if you want to get involved in that one, brilliant. We had over a 1,000 people involved in this one, so it would be wonderful if you could come and join me, and I'm mixing it up a little bit this time so it won't be three stamps. I'll tell you all about that soon. So click that subscribe button and hit the bell. You'll get all the notifications when we are live. You might get sick of me, but you can always mute me, I guess. You can, I promise. Tea, coffee, if anybody's interested, get your own. Get your feet up, get a Kit Kat, get some chocolate and let's have some fun. Now, I did say today we're going to do a project and we are. Let's hope it doesn't um, all go wrong. Let's do a shout out. Leslie, Michaela, uh, Sharon, Jan, Audrey, Melanie. Uh, <laughs> I'll not say that name because I think that's not. Uh, <laughs> Jan. <laughs> Uh, Leslie. Anyway, so <laughs> it's caught me out that. Um, so today, as you can see on the back here, these are all the cards that we've done using this lovely um, kit on this last one, which is that wonderful house and the, the sketchy florals. But today we're going to do a project and we're going to finish on an absolute high because it is a wonderful um, thing to do together. And it's using stamps that you don't normally use. I wouldn't normally buy a little house stamp, but now you've all got a house stamp in your stash ready for if you ever need a new home, new baby, graduation, leaving home, going to college, got you covered. So, um, one thing I do want to tell you about is these paper pads. Now, I do have a show tomorrow at one o'clock. It's not the Create Together Club. It is product. And there are some new things in there. And you've all been asking about our brand new All Surfaces papers. Now, I am going to go through them all tomorrow at one o'clock. We'll do a pick and flick and, flick and go through them as I go down the counter tomorrow at one o'clock. But I will show you the one that I'm going to use now, which is the holographics. I'm using this in my set. In fact, I'll show you a couple of them, actually, because I know a lot of you are wanting to buy three, because it is buy three, save ten. So, in fact, I'll show you them all very quickly, but I'll show you them in more detail tomorrow, and I'll, like, flick them one by one to show you tomorrow, but today I'll do a quick flick. So, royal blue. So, these are our all surfaces, and basically what this means is you get the look of expense, um, you get the look of luxury, but it's paper. And it's uncoated, so it goes through your embossing folders incredibly well. It takes ink, it takes gesso. It's a really, really good way to get those looks, but with paper. And obviously with paper, we have more 
um, scope to do more with. So if I wanted the holographic card, I'm limited. Yeah, I can put them through an embossing folder, sand it back maybe a little bit, but it's not going to carry watercolour. It's not going to carry a lot of the paints because obviously it's metallic and it's a surface that does it's not porous. But because they're printed, it means we have so much more scale to scale up. So these are printed. These are a little bit of a um, cheat, but give you so much scope. So this is royal blue. Now I'm just going to do the flick. Now they give the appearance of glitter chunk. Now this is royal blue. I'm just going to lean it forward and quickly go through. So you can see you have the satin, the marble. Oil. You'll love these last time we brought you these in different colours. We've got a ton of these coming. They do incredibly well. Chunky glitter, that's got that soft, sort of box technique on there. So that is your blue. Very quickly, I have some samples and I'll show you them all tomorrow. So I'll just pop this on the back, keep them all neat. So that's Oxford. So if you are thinking three, write down your favourite. I know a lot of you have already ordered these. So this one is the Burgundy. So you've got your plush colours in here, your darks, your smokies. Well, that looks like hammered metal. You can get, there we go, look at that. And then we have the gilding. Then we have the rock. And then, excuse me, and then at the back we have, again, sparkle. Which is not sparkly, which is cool. That's this one. And then next we have teal. I'm flying through these guys. I'll show you tomorrow. I've got samples. The team have done some fabulous samples. And they really look like sparkly card until you touch them. You're like, oh, it's not sparkly. I'm like, yeah, I know. The teal. So oh, look at that. That looks like metal. Marble. Foil. Uh, ice. Uh, foil. Tin foil. Oh. <gasps> I think this teal one is actually the one that's in that. Looks like that Christmas cellophane that you wrap teddies in and things. I think this is the one that's the most popular at the moment. I think this one and the next one, which is black. And this black one is quite cool in the sense that it's not in your face. So if you normally would run an embossing filter through on black, this is just going to give you veins and things. So this is the black. This is called charcoal. So you have that light texture on there. The bigger ones, they really do look sparkly. Then you have your granite. Then you have the vein, which really does look like foil. So cool. The satin, and then the black sparkle. So that's black. Totally uncoated, you know. If you like the techniques that Paul does and things like that with the brush over with the gessos and sanding back and you know tearing because it's not the real the real deal it just gives you the appearance you've got so much more that you could do with this one i think this one might be one of the popular ones as well the copper so again you get that hammered look gifty then you've got your satin with that halo which looks like metal and then the other way then your sparkle your chunky sparkle then you're even chunkier sparkle in this one and then you're sort of like granulated. All non-shed. <laughs> Love teal. Oh, hang on a minute. Hi, Tony. Where's the box? Irene. It's coming. I did do a box. I did a box. Yeah. Irene visited me this morning. She's like, are you doing a box? I'm like, oh. Are you sure you want to go there? This one's a beautiful one for Christmas. Scarlet. So if you're doing um, matching cards, papers, gift wraps, it is 200 GSM, which is a good weight for scoring. You get away with it for your boxes. Not too, you can't put anything in the box that's too heavy. Just it is 200 GSM, okay? So just bear that in mind. But you can get away with construction with a card inside. Um, card blanks, probably not. I think they'll start to look a bit limp after a day if you try to make a card blank with them. So then again, you've got your metallics and all different surfaces in there. So that's the red one. Brilliant for Christmas, that one. 
might not use it now but it will be showing appearance at christmas and then we have sat bronze now this is cool look at that are you kidding me are you kidding me that's definitely an anniversary card sparkles it's not real guys honestly it's not real hammered look at that metal and your small granules and then we have a big chunky one in there very similar to the copper one this one but it's got that um satiny feel and then big one at the back i like that one a lot and then last one we have the appearance of holographic which i'm going to use in my demo today which again is totally uncoated so i can stamp on it because it's not shiny surface i can stamp on it and it looks like holographic so i have used some of the sheets but i do like a little bit of holographic i think it's underrated understated whatever you want to say so there's um muted ones bright ones oh <gasps> So these are currently on buy three, save 10 cent extra. I really love these ones. Um, but I'll go through them tomorrow and I'll show you some samples. So hopefully if you've been messaging poor Karen, because she's had a lot of messages saying you'd like to see, hopefully that's put your mind at ease and you can pick the three that you really love. Um, right, so let's get straight into demo then, guys. So I'm going to do a box. Right. Box. I'm going to do a box. Eliminate that word, box. For those of you that are new to the channel, there's a story behind the box. And one day I will let you in on the story. One day. My customers just wind me up. And it worked. And it worked. And it worked. And I, the penny just didn't drop. It's a funny story, actually. But anyway, just before I get into demo, though, just a very quick one. Tonight I am live at six o'clock with Susan Tierney Coburn from Spellbinders. She's going to be doing a fantastic demo using her lovely floral dies. Now, they're all available on the web, but I would say don't go shopping. You're thinking, oh, I'm going to sit tight. Sit tight until the live, till we go live, because I'm not certain which flower die she's going to be using. Um, and there's a ton on there. So you might go on there and buy a couple and think, oh, I, I like these ones. And then Susan will do a demo tonight, and you'll be like, oh, I wish I'd have waited and got those. So wait for the live show, see what she uses, see what she recommends, because it's all brand new to me as well. We have specialist paper, we have tools. We've also got some die cutting machines as well, hand crank spell binders. We also have hot foil machines as well. So it's going to be a wonderful show. And if nothing else, um, the inspiration is going to be brilliant. And two, it is lovely to connect with people who have not disappeared, but since emerged from Creating Craft, you know, a lot of people have sort of had to go their own way, do their own thing because circumstances have changed. But, you know, it's really cool to stay connected with your crafty friends. And that's what we're going to do tonight. So we're going to share that friendship with you all. Um, she's got a wonderful group she's going to talk about as well. And let's just share the love of craft. Just enjoy whatever she's going to show us because she is totally awesome. Right, demo. We're going to do a box. Right. The easiest way that I do a box, you all know, it's so easy because I hate measurements. You know what? I'm really good at maths. I say this every time. I can speak several languages. I'm really good at maths. <laughs> but measurements and score lines, I have no idea. It sends me stir crazy. So the way that I do it, and I can't even remember who once showed me this. It might have been on a YouTube or I've seen it at tele, tele or I've seen it somewhere and I thought, you know what, that really is going to help me. So to make a box, a square box is what I'm doing today. All I've done here is I've cut two pieces of card the same size, okay, eight by eight. So two pieces, eight by eight. This is how I make my boxes. Hopefully it will take the frustration out of it for some of you as well. And you're all laughing now because I'm doing a box. I know. I do put myself in these positions, I know. So, but what you have to do is, because the lid needs to fit inside the base or the base needs to fit inside the lid, one needs to be smaller than the other. And I cannot deal with eight and three quarters and nine and a half inch and da, ba, 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 ba. No. All you do is cut two pieces the same size, right? And I'll just turn this around. And then with one of the pieces, you cut a tiny slither off the top. It's probably, let me, two mil. That's all it is, a tiny slither off the top and a tiny slither off the side, two sides only. So I end up with something that just sits with a very small border around. Does that make sense? So two eight by eight pieces of card, cut one 
a little bit off the top and a little bit off the side. Don't do it off all four sides because you'll have a baggy box. <laughs> Your box base will be bagging around in the lid. Two sides, a slither off the top and a slither off the side baggy box. So you'll all be telling me about that next. And then it all depends on how deep you want your box. So this box is only going to have one card. Well, I'm just going to put one card in it, but I think you would probably get three or four cards and a couple of envelopes in this one. So all I've done is I've scored an inch all the way around what side, that side, that side, and that side. And just because it's a different size doesn't mean I have to change my depth of my box. It's still one inch. So then I take the other piece as well. That's a little bit bigger. And I score one inch, one inch, one inch, and then one inch. Okay, super easy here. Nothing too complicated, hopefully. If it all goes wrong, then obviously it is far too complicated. <laughs> Watch this space. So now you've all gone quiet because you're all writing it down because I know exactly what you're all like or you're all grabbing a bit of card now and doing it with me, which is wonderful. So then all when you've done your score lines all the way around, you end up with the four squares in the corner. So you sort of need to cut those away or create like a hinge. So all I'm going to do with mine, which I like to do, is I cut on one of the straight lines like so. And then I cut from the corner of the box in. So it gives me sort of like, I'll show you in a second. You've probably, most of you have made boxes, but it gives you this look. And then I always take away the top of the um, point because it sometimes doesn't sit flush at this side. So you do that on all four sides. And it doesn't matter where you do the straight part, nobody's going to see it. So I'm just going to pop it in like so. And then I'm just going to take off the point. I'm going to do this all the way around. You have all gone totally quiet. You're all grabbing card. I know what you like. Like so. And you need to all stay tuned as well, because I've got seven winners on my desk for you all. Seven winners from all of those seven shows. How wonderful is that? I'm going to send you all a little tree. I might even send you a card as well, because we've got a ton of cards and samples, as you know, from me doing this seven days on each stamp. So I've got a ton of cards. So I'll send you a card as well. How's that sound? And then the other one will do the same. So one on the straight and then one in two. And then I just take away the tip just to get rid of that nasty point. Do you know as well, I've created a scoreboard for the Eureka. Um, that's going to do this for you. Now I've been talking about having accessories for Eureka, one of which is to make this cool box with no measuring. No measuring. I know, it's great, isn't it? And then just take that to box. So now I have my four. So then all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the cleanest side for the exterior. No fingerprints on this one. Linda says she's learning of something new today. That's made my day, Linda. So all I'm going to do here is score up on the score lines. And then I'm just going to score in my little, um, my little flap here. Like I say, I, I don't know where I learnt this. I will have stole it from somebody who's been quite clever back in the day. And I thought, you know what, I, that will really help me because I am absolutely pants when it's, you know, when this, like, you know, when you go to a class and you get a sheet and it says, right now, cut at four and three quarters. I always cut it wrong and I have to, I have to make do. So there we go. So we've got sort of, I'm not sure if it's our lid or our what, base at the bottom of, at the moment but we'll see so then this one so scoring this is a um, 300 gsm card by the way it's super thick um you can do it with 250 quite easily 200 you could get one card in it but i, I won't go any less than that because it'll look a bit shabby oh Charlotte's just asked that question. This is 300. 250 would be perfect, though. This is a bit thick. You know where I'm having to really like. I mean, you could burnish it with the tools. But when I say burnish, it's like you just score it with a score uh, tool sort of system. So let's get this stuck together. So all I'm going to... Oh, do you see that? That's my list of winners. 
I need to stay tuned for that one. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to unblock my glue first and then I'm just going to seal the sides on and then we'll have. So if you want, say, a box that's going to house like um, more cards and more envelopes, then just score it an inch and a half all the way around both pieces of card. Or if you're putting maybe a gift in it, like a little mini album, you just score the depth of how how deep you think your album is going to be okay so let's get this one glued i do love projects as you all know and we do have the paper chain range now that does give you that um project and the other project is going to be loaded i know you've been asking me about it, it is done um and that will be loaded shortly as well so i'm just giving it a second to grab if you've got some paper clips or anything like that to help you out, that would really help right now. But, you know, it's what it is. It's the last session, so I'm not bothered how long it takes. Tape pen would probably hold it as well for now. If you are doing something that you want longevity in, tape pen and glue, okay, it'll really hold it together. Because after time, glue just dries out or tape pens just dry out too. I think I'm just going to tape pen it for now, otherwise I'm going to be here all day just holding that. Let's do that. Let that one just grab first, though. Hi, Philippa. I do. Michaela's saying she likes making all kinds of things, not just cards. I do. I love albums. I've got to. I'm a bit of an album. Or a projecty sort of, you know, like seedy gift packets and things like you know, I love all like that. So here I'm just popping some tape onto the um, triangle look just for now for speed. And I'm just gonna tuck it in there. Tape them all really before you. And then we'll just stick that one in there. Make sure it's as flush as you, you know, as straight as you can. And that just makes your box look a little bit neater and tidier. So there we have a nice box lid look. Super cool. Or a base, I'm not sure yet. So let's just hold that in place. So we'll do the same with this one. So the best way to do it is not how I've just done it there. It's like this. So when you've got it flat, pop some tape on all of the hinges or glue. And then pin it in place as you go. And then see which is your base and which is your lid. It's my base. There you go. You see? Just because we took a slither off each side, you've got plenty of room for growth in there. Absolutely wonderful. And it looks lovely too. Keep it all nice, keep it all clean. So let's decorate the front first. So just remember... The tiniest slither across the top and the tiniest slither across the thing. If you do it too much, you're going to end up with a base. This might be a little bit bad. It's all right, actually. But if you take too much off, the base is going to rattle and it's not going to look as nice, probably, as you, if, as you anticipated. Right, so I'm bringing out the ribbon. You know, I haven't played with ribbon for such a long time. I thought, you know what? We're going to do it. So I have a piece of that holographic. Now, if you don't have holographic or these papers or anything like that, even the stamps, you will have something in your stash where you can, you'll have cardstock, you'll have pattern paper and you'll have a stamp that you like to use. So you'll be able to sort of like do your own thing in relation to what I'm doing today. So that is that lovely sort of light um, holographic in there. What I want to do though is I want to make it look like it's a present. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some ribbon. And this is just some ribbon that um, we have in store. I'm just going to cut two pieces. And then I'm just going to grab the card. This would make, if you did a card with a seed packet in, saying, you know, plant your garden for your new home, that would be lovely. Or if, if 
co-parents are moving in with uh, daughters to help look after the children or need a helping hand, you know, can't be at home on their own any longer. These sorts of things really do um, put a smile on people's faces, doesn't it? You know, seeds or maybe a hot chocolate moving into your first home. Here's a lovely hot chocolate. Put the kettle on. You've got no carpet. You've got no couch. But sit on the floor and have a hot chocolate, you know. Cool, isn't it? So we've done one day. Oh, make sure it's straight, though. There we go. And then this way. Now, again, use red liner for this one. I'm just using my um, inexpensive tape pen here, but use red liner so nothing budges. Because people do save things when it's more than just a card. We all know that. I'm just going to pop this down the centre here. And pull it tight-ish. And then make sure you can get it nice and straight. So before we pop this onto our box, Christmas presents, Philippa. Um, she, Julie always does a nice box when she does a card. Do you know what, though, guys? Quick question here. Does anybody else... Oh, that's coming undone now. That's why I said you need to make sure you use tape and glue. Um, does anybody actually sell the cards these days? Because I find, like, a lot of people before, when I first started crafting, a lot of people used to buy product to make cards to sell. And they used to, I feel like, there used to be a little bit of profit in that when I first started card making, which is not even that long ago, really, about 10, 12, 14 years ago. Um, and you could make projects and recoup a little bit of that money. But do you think... Now people just buy because they just love craft and, you know, they just enjoy the making element of it rather than trying to make a little bit of pocket money because I don't think the pocket money's there anymore, do you? What do you think, guys? You'll have to let me know on that. So here I have the house and I fussy cut it away. And I'm going to do a cute tag for the front of my box. Now, it is a little bit big, but I, I like the oversized side of it so this is what it's sort of like going to come together and i want a swinging tag on my box now you could cut away the top bit of the flowers you could just cut away the house just the house in fact let's do that because i like the oversized but i appreciate if you're all copying along it might overwhelm you so i'm just going to cut away all that fussy cutting i did before coming to where now I've just gone and ruined it Let's just have the house and the flowers. That looks nice, doesn't it? So then all we're going to do here is I just have my um, cotton, you know, the lovely cotton. This is on the web. I use this quite a lot. And then I'm going to grab some of it. And I'm going to stick it under my sort of cross design here. Let's just get rid of our box for now. And then I'm going to tie it in a knot. So this will sort of like pull that bow thing area together in the middle. See here, watch. Not too tight. Just a little bit. I've got a little knot in there so I know my tag's not going to come off my box. Don't worry about that pinch in the middle because that's going to be hidden. And then tie it as tight as you can. Then I'm just going to pinch away one leg and then the other leg I'm just going to cut off a little bit. And I'm going to tape it to the back of our lovely tag like so. Now, if you want to hide the makings, you could put a little flower. So if you've got a flower, you could pop a little flower to cover or you could cut another one and stick it to the reverse, just a plain white one. But for speed, you get the idea. I'm just going to pop this on here. You could spend some great time, I'll make that a bit shorter, time um, colouring, embellishing. See, I've just stuck that there. So, yeah, I'm sure you could come up with an idea to get rid of your makings there, cut another one and stick it on the back. So here we have sort of this swinging tag system here. So let's, before we go any further, let's get this onto our box, which is coming undone because my tape pens are not great. Needs gluing, really. So let's pop this onto here. I'm just going to do it with tape for now.
I miss all comments when I get to into um, creating like this. So which way do I want it? I think we'll go like that. I'm just going to pop this onto the front of our box here. Some flower seeds would be cool. And you could do it all in yellows as well if you wanted to. And then you could take some ribbon here. Like I have done a bow here. Tie it all together. Which would be really lovely, wouldn't it? But what I like to do is I like to do the extravagant, although I'm absolutely pants at it. I do like the extravagant bow. So I'm just going to cut some of this and feed this under and sort of like try and do a nice... Anyone else good at bows? My design team for um, HSN are incredible at bows. I was well jealous when I got all the samples. I'm like, oh. So look, we tied it here so it looks like it's got... And then maybe... Only maybe after the other day's disaster, I'm going to have a great day this time. <laughs> so let's just pull that tight. Oh, with our fabulous swinging tag in there. Let's just hide that bit of it there. So that's the box so far. That's not a bad effort, is it? That bow. I'm not going to touch that bow because I feel like I'm tempting, but I did do one loose which if you wanted to you could actually do like a double like a double you know if you really wanted to push the boat out you could really really go to town and make it extravagant i'll leave the boat system with you though guys because it's not my forte but anyway let's get on to what's going inside i'm quite chuffed with that i think that looks really pretty right so the card that goes inside I have cut some more of the mirror and I have my piece of white card here. Now what we're going to do is we haven't 3D'd this house throughout the whole of the show. So I feel like it needs 3D in. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm just going to grab a piece of white card here. So this is for the centre of my um, card. Let's just get rid of these pieces here because they're going to confuse me. That bow might even go inside the card maybe. Um, and then we'll grab our stamp. I'm going to use the house. I'm going to pop it straight in the center. And we'll stamp this one in black. Cat charity cards. Cat protection. Oh, Brenda, that's so kind. Sue says she just enjoys making cards for friends and family, never sold them. Philippa loves a good bow. So don't forget, I, I, I haven't put this on the schedule yet. It will be on the schedule. I'm live tomorrow at one o'clock, okay, with some goodies. Um, I need to showcase an item as well with you all tomorrow. I'll just move my magnet. I'm getting a bit closer there. There we go. So there's my house. And then what I've done is I stamped the house three times here. And what I did was I cut away some of the designs. Just move that out of the way. So you can see here I, I, I cut away some of the leaves, um, cut away some of the elements. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to 3D it on top. Now, I don't have any pads, so I'm going to make my own. And the way that I do that is like this. Where are my scissors? Here we go. So any off cut, I just cut set pieces that are of similar size. So you will all have off cuts of card, I'm certain of it. And then I just glue them all together. Oh, not with that amount of glue, we don't. We do not need that much glue. So I glue, I glue them all together. Just give myself a little bit of dimension. So just use your off cut. You will all have them, I'm sure, if you're anything like me. It doesn't matter if they get messy, and then we'll use that last one. And then give that a second to grab. So I've created myself a pad. All uneven, but who cares? Nobody sees behind. 
or Philip is off to work. See you soon, sweetheart. Have a great day. Be safe. So this one now, I'm going to stick to the back of here. And then we're going to pop some glue on here. And we're going to overlay it like a decoupage sort of system. So I'm just going to pop it on there. So we get our lovely 3D house. Give that a second to grab. Drink your coffee while it grabs. <laughs> And then I went one step further, stamped it again, and then I cut away these little pieces here where I felt like it would be nice to embellish these up. So I'm just going to twist the edges up a little bit. And I'm just, oh. I'm going to stick these on top. But I'm going to twist them slightly just so I get that little bit of dimension. See there? So now we've got like a lovely 3D flower there. And we've got the cute door. You'd love to live in this house, wouldn't you? I would. <laughs> We've got our little door with the elevated sides. And then we have got this one here, which is not being cut very well, Tony, at all. And we'll, pop, we'll give this one a bit of a twist and a tweak. If you've got all the posh tools. I do like to offset a little bit, you know, so it creates a little bit of... That looks really cool. Now, obviously, you could colour it, take your time. Sparkle it, I do whatever you like to it. Right, so let's bring in our card. So I have just my card blank, so this is going to fit inside my box. Now you could make several of these, add some envelopes, and you've got a note card set. So, so many um, ideas, really. So I've cut a piece of that lovely sort of like imitation mirror. Mirror, mirror. I'm just going to take my 3D house, and as you can see, my 3D house will sit in there beautifully. This is why you need a little bit of dimension on your box, so you get that dimension on there. Now, I would probably mount this onto a bit of silver to tie it all together, too. This is like a gift in a gift in a gift, isn't it? Just keep giving. Tony needs a bow maker, Michaela. I don't need a bow maker, darling. I have something coming that's got a bow maker. Now, there you did get the biggest sneak peek ever. Anyway, look at this beautiful 3D house. Philip is definitely going to try this decoupage house now. Go for it. So, uh, I've never sold cards for myself. However, I've sold many over the years for various charities, dog reviews, cancer research, a bit more. That's wonderful. We give our cards to ca um, cancer. Yeah, we do. For obvious reasons. So there we have our lovely card. I mean, look at the Look at that. Is that not just amazing? It's cool, isn't it? So, um, oh, uh, oh, I thought I'd missed a layer then. So inside, I'm going to make something else that's going to go inside this. Let's move that to one side. So for this sort of technique, you need a card blank, just a little one. You'll all have the little cards knocking around that are about this size. I have these because uh, USA, when I go to America, they make tiny cards. I mean, look at, look at the size of this compared to what we made yesterday. Just look at this. <laughs> very small, very small cards they make. So I have a ton of these. So what I did was, let's just move this to one side, is I grabbed my Eureka. And I popped the card into my Eureka and I took the stamp and I stamped the stamp just on the hinge of the card. So let's, let's just do it. Pretend I've got some ink on here. Let's stamp it so you can see. So I stamped the stamp just hanging off the edge of my card blank with that hinge, okay? Like so, say for instance. And then I took my scissors and I cut it out, but I didn't go anywhere near the hinge. So I went round like so, 
world's biggest scissors and I'll and I cut around the whole thing carefully. You will have a little scissors than me. So I went all the way around, cutting it out all the way, all the way, all the way, and then I got this. Which is like a little note card. And this, you could stamp a little message in here. You could add a gift card in here. You could add £10 and say buy a plant for your home if you wanted to. I coloured this in a little bit of pink while I was waiting to go live, but you could absolutely jazz it up and you could totally pop a magnet on the back and it can stick to somebody's fridge. So you've got a gift in a gift. But my plan was with that was to pop this off cut, which was from my box, and glue it at the top and at the bottom in the middle of our card. Give that chance to grab. Only nobody fussy cuts like you do. I'm so bad at it. I'm fast at it, but I'm bad at it. And now I hate fussy cutting. But you know, I'm happy to do it where it's achievable. I always had a die if I just know it. it's just a big ask. Uh, and I think this is not too difficult. And then this card, so if you write a love letter, you could even put a little magnetic closure on here. And then this card is going to sit underneath our belly band. Hopefully. Like so. So they can take the card out of the card. And the card goes into its coordinating box with a... See that here? And then we have our wonderful lid. And then I have a sentiment, said sweet home. I'm not sure about that now, do you think? No. I'm not sure about sentiment. It's all coming undone because I'd use the tape. But um, in fact, let's just have a look inside. So we do the... Oh, let's do a banner. Take it out. Take it out, Tony. I'm getting giddy now because I'm enjoying myself. I'm sorry. So I'm going to do like a hump on there, but give myself some little feet too. So we can create a banner on our lovely card. Back to work, Tanya. Okay, sweetheart, see you later. And then hopefully we can create this wonderful banner. Is Irene still on? Irene, did you like my box? <laughs> Brilliant idea, isn't it? I mean, you could colour it up and really be creative, couldn't you? You could add some sparkles and some gems. So you have the maybe potential quote inside gift card money anything you want to in that hidden thing in there then we have the 3d house with the lovely sentiment in there which of course you could jazz up and then it goes into its wonderful box this will make a great wedding card as well for weddings and then we have our wonderful gift box too and you could if you even wanted to go to the extra length of decorating the whole box and making it really unique and really really pretty if you wanted to there we go. What do we all think? Do we like that one? I think it's lovely that the it matches. So a visual straight away is you get the tag of the home, so you know it's going to be something awesome. And then inside it falls through to the 3D house and then further to the giftable as well. So I think that's really, really wonderful. So shall we pop this on? In fact, let's get it out to showcase and then we can have a look at... Um, oh, let's just move these. Got a full... It's not going to stand up now because it's still wet. Uh, we have a full back here because of the whole show. You're going to tell us your box tail one day. Terry, it'll take, I'll have to do it in Studio 3 because it'll take some time. Oh, I'll just pop that to the back. There we go. So number card number one was the hidden message. Card number two was the Z fold card with the the hidden sort of flap where it flaps up and down. Then we did the interactive like um, village, which 
again frustrated me but i eventually got it then we did the lovely um triple emboss double emboss on our house and on the embossing folders then the disaster came when we tried to do it on the non-heat resistant acetate but i managed to recover it with the vellum panel then yesterday we went totally neon so like just to add some colour to the sessions because I felt like I was going down the craft line. And then on today's one, we've done that lovely, beautiful giftable with the box, the card, which could be a seed album, a little folio. It could be absolutely anything you wanted it to be. So that is the close of Create Together Chapter 2. Well done, everyone, if you did take part. Thank you so much if you purchased the three stamps. Thank you so much if you did get involved. And just thank you. It is a great way to be interactive together. I cannot tell you how much fun it is for us here at Stamps By Me to me have to wrap my brain as to how can we do something different? What can we do today that's going to change craft up a little bit so we don't get stuck in that rut? Um, it's just wonderful. I do have Create Together Club Chapter 3 on my radar and I will talk about that very, very soon. Um, so I will pop that live at some point so you can all get involved and then sit with bated breath to see what's going to come through your door. So let's talk about the winners over the seven sessions. So let me know on this last one today. I always like feedback. What would you like to see next? Did you enjoy the show? Uh, show any, any feedback? Were the show times good for you? Were they pants? Would you like them to be longer? Would you like them to be shorter? You know, just give us some feedback in relation to it because as you know, we. We encourage everybody to get involved in it. And I know we're never going to be able to please everyone, but it is a lovely place to come and get some inspiration. So I have a list of seven winners over the course of the last seven days. So if you know any of these ladies, because some of them might be at work, please do let them know. Um, and just PM me your addresses. I'm going to send you all a card from the course of the Craft Academy and I'll send you a, a gift as well. So we have Michaela Burridge, well done. Judith Corey, well done. Amanda Wiegram, well done. Sylvia King, well done. Nicole P, Susan Hale, and Marion Wade. Well done, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to get involved. It's been wonderful. I'm back tomorrow with you at one o'clock for another show um, in relation to product. But tonight, six o'clock, um, is our lovely workshop with Susan Tierney Coburn from Spellbinders. So that's going to be a wonderful show. And again, Get a bar of chocolate, grab a cup of tea and just come and say hello. We'd love to have your company. Any questions, she's here live in studio, so it's a great opportunity to speak to the guests themselves. So whatever you're doing, I'll see you all very, very soon. Stay safe. See you later. Bye.